now in vibrant color. Welcome to class four of the World War II Miniature Wargaming Boot Camp. Last time we talked about scales and hopefully that gave you some direction and some thought about which one scale or couple you might want to choose as you go into this hobby. But now we're going to talk about size matters. Don't worry, I'm not talking about something wardrobe after dark subject here. What I'm talking about is the size of the armies and the battles you want to represent on your table. And similar to scales, a lot of this will, you know, what will dictate this will be the table size and the money you have, how much, uh, how much you want to build and paint, etc. Um, so we're going to cover the basics, some basic army unit um, group or uh, units uh, sizes uh, within World War II. And then those, how those play into the uh, battle sizes that you'll play in, in miniature. And then after we do that, it's going to be similar to scales. I'm just going to go through and say the different size of battles and then some of the rule sets that represent battles in those that I'm aware of. And of course, there may be more. And uh, you know, the ones that I believe you can find either in PDF or in print uh, today in December of 2020. Okay. So uh, some basic uh, foundation that we need to understand is um, military unit size and you know what that some of the terminology. So most of the militaries for the most part had a similar type of like three uh, based on threes, a three to four, um, how they structured their units is almost like a little pyramid um, um, on how they were built out. And so you'll see some similarities in that. Now the Soviet army had some different nomenclature. They used some of the same nomenclature, but their sizes were a little different about how many units were in there. But I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to go real basic. So for example, uh, there's a team. And what is a team? A team is two to six soldiers. Um, and those are sometimes uh, we'll have an NCO or non-commissioned officer, uh, like a sergeant leading that group. And that's how many people are on that. You have then next a squad or section. And those are made up of two teams, two to three teams. And so that represents anywhere between eight to 12 to 15 people, depending on the army and the time of the war that you had. Um, and that's usually represented with a, an, an NCO as well. And again, some games will represent um, that squad with each of those uh, soldiers. So you'll have eight to 12 to 15 soldiers on the table and you can say that's a squad. Or in many of the games I play, you have one stand with you know two to four figures on it and you say that's a squad. So it's a little bit of an abstraction and Wargaming has done this for years, especially in like things like Napoleonics where you have these large gather guard units to paint all the figures would almost be impossible. So they say a stand represents you know, a certain number of soldiers. It's the same in World War II and it allows you to play larger scale games without having to paint you know, 5,000 miniatures. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more in detail. So again, we have a team is made up of two to six and then two or three teams make up a squad. Okay. Uh, the next uh, size unit up is platoon, made up of, you know, two to four squads. And again, and those have about 30 to 50 figure, uh, uh, soldiers in it. But then you start to get more officers and a little bit more support. And again, some games will represent that. You'll have all the figures on the table that represent everyone in that platoon. Or again, as I've played some games, one stand will represent a platoon of figures. And it starts to get at this scale where the tanks, one tank might represent three to five tanks because that's a platoon of tanks. The previous smaller scales, usually it's one tank equals one tank. Again, it varies on the rules and that's something to look into. It depends how, some people are great and okay with the abstraction like I am and some people really want everything on the table to be represented and that's cool. That's the beauty of the hobby. Play how you want to play. So the next up from platoon is then a company. You guessed it made up of three to four platoons and you just start to exponentially you know get more people in there uh, 60 80 to 120 uh, soldiers or 150 soldiers again depending on the air and time soldiers support and and then that is that's how that's represented and then from companies you go up to something called battalions and this is often how i've played many games um, in a game called blitzkrieg commander or command decision because each stand equals a platoon. So then you have three platoons make up a company, and then you have three more to make another company and three more to make another company. So you have nine stands representing, um, you know, three, you know, nine stands represents a battalion of um, soldiers, 
And then you have some tank support, artillery support, officer support, sometimes supply. And so that's how that plays out. And then you can go up into the next level is a division. And those are made up of uh, several battalions. Now, in between that is regiment. And really depending on the army and the time, oftentimes, again, regiments had two to three, but made up of two to three battalions. And a division is made up of two to three regiments. So you can see what's cool about it is it's a very nice system to remember. Um, it's not a lot of difference. The biggest difference is in the era of the war, and some of the countries had a little bit different. Um, a lot of the platoon uh, squads and platoons were a little bigger at the early onset of the war, it seemed, and then they kind of got a little smaller, one because of man resources, and I think they also figured out how to better operate um, with the troops and the weaponry that maybe they didn't need that size. Okay, super high level. I'm going to leave some links in that blog post I always refer to in the description. Um, it's a, I'm sorry, it's a page on my website, so you can click through. And it's going to give you a lot more description on that, a little bit more reading on that. I don't think you need to spend a lot of time on that or worry too much about that. But these are just some terms that you know are good to know as you, as you move forward. Okay, so now let's go look at the rules and the different sizes of battles that are available out there. And then some of the rules that represent those. Again, it's going to be me saying skirmish and giving you a list of rules companies. Again, I'll link to those in the description. All right, let's take a look. All right, let's talk first about skirmish. So this is about five to ten soldiers, maybe a vehicle on the board. 148th Tactic by Buda. They also make amazing terrain. Um, their game, so 148th is the size of the figures they play. So this is by far the biggest scale um, of all the games that we have here. Um, I should also say, remember, a lot of these games can be played at multiple scales. They're oftentimes designed for one scale or two scales, but you can usually adjust and adapt. But that one is really designed for that, and they have figures for it and stuff. But again, you could probably use any scale for that. Uh, Five Minute Kursk by Nordic Weasel Games. There's Combat Patrol by Buck Surdu. I do know this is run by uh, cards, like playing card size. And it's got a lot of details about where you get hit and that stuff. Can It kind of scales in complexity, but it's run by cards, so it's very unique. Fistful of Lead by Wiley Games. It's pictured here. Um, so Fistful of Lead and is really a sandbox of, um, of rules. And you can go from uh, uh, cavemen to sci-fi, but you also can do um, World War II. And I've played with his rules, and I've actually played games run by him. And uh, Jay Wiley is a really cool dude, and it's it's a very fun uh, game. Flying Lead by Ganesha Games. Ganesha makes a, uh, a series of games similar to Wiley Games that are kind of sandbox. And Flying Lead is their modern war, so meaning you know World War II and later, uh, you know adoption of some of their rules. And I've never played those, um, but Ganesha Games is a well-known game company. Nuts by Two Hour War Games is a very unique system. It's uh, you can play this solo. I'd say it's one of the only ones on all of these lists that you can actually. It's designed to be played solo and with two people or more. And he's got an interesting uh, reaction system on that. So that's an interesting one to check out. Okay, platoon versus platoon. So remember, this is going to be about 30, uh, 30 guys against you know thirty to fifty guys, a couple tanks, maybe it's all tanks, but. Um, this is a scale that a size I play. I don't really skirmish much, but I do platoon v platoon. Battle group by Iron Fist. Now, battle group you're going to see on several lists, and you're going to start to see some of these games listed several times. It's because battle group can be scaled for this platoon versus platoon up to battalion battalion. Okay, there's of course Bolt Action by Warlord Games. We've talked about that. Chain of Command by Two Fat Lardies has really taken the miniature game by storm, frankly. And I would say it and Bolt Action are the two biggest ones at this scale. Um, and so Chain of Command is an interesting act, dice activation system I mean, by rolling dice and then the numbers tell you what you can do. Combat Patrol again by Bucks or Duke can be played at both scales. All right, bigger Battles by Wiley Games. So it is, you know, the Fistful of Lead system, but now it's bigger battles. And you'll see Nuts, big battles. So they've kind of adapted their game to play it with more figures on the table besides, you know, a skirmish size. What I didn't put on here was a game called Disposable Heroes. And... It is um, by um, Keith Stein of uh, Little Wars TV fame, and it's uh, put out by uh, Iron Ivan, and um, and it's a, a fun, and it's also a very unique system um, and how he how he activates and how you bring people on and how it models this scale of uh, warfare. 
Okay, company versus company. Okay, there's a lot here. I didn't realize how many there were until I started building this list out. Um, there's a game that I just learned about called All Hell Let Loose uh, by David Wasilewski. Um, probably sorry, David, for that. Um, he j I just found out about it. In fact, he responded to one of my videos and let me know about it. So I don't have any experience with that yet, but it um, is available on Wargame Vault. Uh, Battle Group, as we talked about before. Blitzkrieg Commander. This is probably my favorite rule set, and you see many, probably most of my miniature games are in this game. Um, it can be played company versus company, and you'll see it again here soon on the list. I like it because of its dice activation system, and you have to roll. I'm sorry, not dice activation, but you roll to get commands or not. Uh, Crossfire by Artie Conliffe, a very unique system. No rulers, and really no charts either. Um, he designed it because someone said, can you do a game without uh, measuring and without like turns, essentially? Well, there are turns, but very interesting game. O older, but a lot of people still play it. Fireball Forward. Um, I've just recently got this and kind of learned it, and but then I got into making this series and I'm gonna go back to that. Um, I don't have a lot of experience with that um, yet. Five Core Company Command by Nordic Weasel is a uh, unique system and Nordic Weasel does a lot of games. Um, uh, Flames of War, of course, as you know, we've talked about. I Ain't Been Shot, Mum, uh, by um, Two Fat Lardies. The same people that make Chain of Command. Uh, it is also card activated. There's Mind Panzer. This was the very first rule set I ever bought by OD, ODWG. Um, and they are still selling it. And it is a very uh, scalable system, meaning you can play it very simply. Or then they have these add-ons, and you can make it as complicated as you want. It's usually played in Micro Armor scale, so six. Then there's Micro Armor Squad by GHQ, the makers of the miniatures. Um, it's free for download, as is their other game. Nuts, Big Battles. Um, you can also play it at Company versus Company. All right, Battalion versus t Battalion. This is the rule, the games that I play the most with, um, because I use Blitzkrieg Commander. But there's All Hell Let Loose. And as was mentioned, there's Battlefront World War II by Fire and Fury, as is pictured here. Battle Group, again, by Iron Fist, Blitzkrieg Commander. Combat HQ by Wargames Design, a fairly relatively new player, like a couple of years um, out there. Command Decision by Frank Tragic. I would say this is one that really got me, because I was playing with a local group, got me hooked into even more World War II miniature 15 mil uh, gaming. Local group played some games. It's a very, uh, it's been around. It's in its fourth version. It's been around a long time, uh, 20 plus years. And my name's even in a couple of the books as a playtester, which is cool. So um, Fistful of Toes, a very popular one. It's got uh, World War II and Modern. Five Core Brigade Commander. I should say the, the Nordic Weasel games are a little sandboxy. They're very focused on their era, but they are kind of sandboxy in that you can, uh, I've said era. Um, they're modern, but you can, you know, scale them. There's Group O by Two Fat Lardies. There's a bunch of videos coming out that's not even out as of the making of this, but it'll be out soon. So since I know this video will live for a while, it'll probably be out here soon. Micro Armor the Game by GHQ, uh, same, the miniature makers. And then finally, Nuts Big Battles. Um, and finally, Larger Battles. So, so we're talking uh, bigger, like your stands are maybe companies or maybe even um, battalions or something. And that's there's not very many of these and not very many people play at this scale, but you can. In fact, Little Wars TV has a game um, at this scale um, on their channel, which is interesting. But Field of Battle by Paquette. Um, if you look up Field of Battle, man, I'm not, I shouldn't even talk. About, I think it's Napoleonic, but then there's they also have a World War II version. I have played it a little bit. And there's Rommel by Test of Honor. Um, Sam Mustafa, and that is the one that is on um, uh, Little Wars TV. They do D-Day. And then there's Spearhead, as you see here, by Artie Conliffe, the same gentleman who made um, um, Crossfire. And I do not have any experience with Spearhead, but you can play bigger games with that. Well, okay, those are the different sizes of the battle armies and sizes of the battles you can play. I hope and that's, again, helping you kind of narrow down, thinking through what you might want to play and have on your table. Again. I came to the conclusion that I, I enjoy buying rules and kind of learning and figuring out what, you know, how they work and what makes them work. And I'm, I don't even plan to play a lot of them. And that's, that's kind of a part of the hobby. And so that might become a part of the hobby for you. So you might have to buy a few rule sets to start to 
really find one that really speaks to you and really you know sinks in with your your kind of play and the kind of size of the battle you want to have the next class we're going to talk about terrain and supplies again really high level uh, probably I would say not necessarily a strength of mine but so I'll just cover it super high level and provide links to resources that can really help you out essential tools and supplies to be be in this hobby so join us for the next class to talk about that we'll see you then